So let me start by explaining you why we needed AOT in our company, as a, as a product company, why this was important. And then I will walk you through our uh, AOT schemes, some challenges we went through, step-by-step uh, -step manual performance comparison, uh, because we also developed our product in C++ before, so I can give you some, some comparisons. And also comparisons between uh, the, the JIT version and JIT runtime and AOT runtime, and then also the C++ uh, runtime. So I hope you'll find it uh, interesting. Also, we prepared a GitHub repository where you can basically try everything out, which I'm going to show you now, like in a very simple uh, demo way, and you can implement your own routines and get your uh, DLL, uh, you know, up and running with basically two commands. So everything is ready uh, at the GitHub, which I'm going to share at the end of the presentation. So. Let me start by explaining why we as a product company needed AOT. So uh, we have a product which does automatic model building for time series. It has been applied to a couple of industrial verticals. At the moment, we are quite strong and focused in energy industry. So we model electricity load, gas consumption, uh, wind production, solar production. We, we do balancing on the grid, uh, technical losses, system imbalance, and, and, and et cetera. These are all time series problems. Uh, so our product has API, it sits on Azure, and, and this, is the, this is the architecture. <coughs> so the yellow uh, boxes which you see there, this is the AOT compiled uh, DLL, which is uh, written purely in Julia, and uh, RabbitMQ, the queue manager which we use is RabbitMQ. RabbitMQ talks to those uh, Julia AOT workers, and then entire logic is governed by uh, the, the, the green box, which is written in Java in the Spring uh, framework, and then the API is exposed to the clients which consume it uh, via the REST API. So this then very scales very nicely because that Julia is, uh, is uh, inside the container and then it scales via the Kubernetes uh, Azure AKS services. So we wanted you know, to have our engine obviously compiled in AOT way for a couple of reasons. So the technical reasons are that we wanted to have a you know, nice DLL inside the container we didn't want to have like the source code kind of float around because we are a company which has a proprietary product. And uh, so these were like reasons like the IP protection and also, uh, you know, like we are deploying this also on premise and you just want a DLL, you know, which works nicely in a container so that you can scale. So this was the motivation. So this is our AOT scheme in general. So the engine is written in Julia. So that's the Julia AOT part. Then. Obviously, from our product, we talk to other libraries. So one obvious one is BLAS. So we, we talk, we, we do a lot of calls to BLAS. But also, for example, uh, like some other third-party libraries, like uh, licensing libraries and et cetera. So we need to do, you know, a couple of calls uh, to the external libraries from our Julia code. Then there is a driver on the a, on a left-hand side with the API, and then the application could be like a simple C++ applications, which then talks to our AOT DLL via uh, C or C++ uh, API bindings. So this is, this is the architecture. Uh, the Julia AOT part, uh, after the compilation, which I'm gonna talk about just now, that will emerge as a full AOT.so. So I'm already at the, at the example which, which we do. So uh, the, the, the foo example has just a couple of lines of the code. It will expose just one function, which then you can call from the outside world via, via an API. Uh, so the Julia AOT part will be the result, results in the foo AOT.so. It will talk to the open blast, for example, or some other uh, libraries. And then on the left-hand side, there will be like a full driver, which is written in a C, and then the application of the, on, on, the, on the very left uh, side. Uh, there are some, some other schemes down here which explains you know, uh, where these files will, from which files will actually .so files come up. So what you will need to, to run the example in its full entirety is first you need to install a package compiler which uh, you, can, you can get uh, you know, from the repository. Uh, and then you will need uh, your Julia code in foo.jl. So our foo.jl in this example will be as simple as this one. So we just create a, a structure data which has a field name, there's some string, and a vector of some floats, and then function bar which just does something with those uh, data. Then you will need to create a C API plus driver as follows. So that will involve a file foo.h and foodriver.cpp. 
And then you will need to create a Julia program to compile. So that's kind of a gateway between your Julia IoT and the, and the C uh, driver. That can be written as uh, follows. How much time do you have left? Five minutes, all right. And then, so these are very concrete steps which if you get our repository, you can, you know, you can replicate this uh, with, the, with, the, with the remaining steps. So in the black box, uh, which is uh, on the picture, with this, with this uh, command, you will build the files here. So in the build directory, you, will, you, you have to be in, the, in your package directory and from within there, you will run this, uh, this example, you will run this uh, command. So in this part, you will build foo.aot, foo.aot.so, and uh, all the including libraries will be copied to the build directory. In next step, with the following, zap, with the following uh, uh, command, you will get your foodriver.so, and again, it's gonna reside in the build directory of your package. And then finally, with this, you can build your, your app, and uh, you're basically good to go. Your app will then talk to the API driver, and you can call your uh, bar function in a straightforward way. So we have some comparisons here uh, because obviously we are compiling it on, on, on some local machines or sometimes remote machines and then the product is being you know, deployed on a variety of other machines. So uh, we were also wondering whether JIT in speed is com comparable to IoT you know, and uh, I think it's safe to say that yes, uh, very much. So it's like kind of one to one. So on a certain task, certain data set, uh, we did AOT exercise compiled on a local machine that took 36 seconds. Then AOT uh, compiled on different machine and run on the local machine that took 35 seconds. Then the JIT version, uh, like warm up took like 41 seconds and then the JIT second run took 36 seconds, which shows that whether you are running AOT or whether you are running JIT, you're kind of equally you know, good in terms of the speed. So that's very good message because like uh, uh, you get this for granted and it's very nice to have a language where the JIT performance and AOT performance, you know, it's uh, on par. That, that's really useful also for the commercial company. So I think that's also something which helps Julia to spread further also in the commercial uh, sphere because AOT is obviously for, for, for proprietary companies and for commercial deployment quite uh, important. All right, so this is the URL uh, where you can get uh, the, the demo, so you can look it up. And uh, yeah, I think that's it. So I'll, I'll keep this. <laughs> uh, so on the GitHub, we have entire repository. Uh, maybe I can even open, up, open this up here. No. So there is also documentation on the GitHub which you can open up and actually you need to just run two commands and uh, you will get your entire uh, AOT chain you know, up and running. So uh, it's really easy to use and you're more than welcome to, to check it out. Thank you very much. We have time for about just one question. So thanks a lot for your presentation. Uh, do you have any kind of possible ideas why compiling on another machine would be slightly faster than compiling on your own machine, like 36 versus 35 seconds? So I think, I mean, 36 versus 35, uh, it's not something which we should be too busy with, you know? It's just a noise. So we were just wondering whether on a kind of the same hardware, which let's say runs in Azure, our AOT DLL will run in the same way and we could kind of confirm that. So obviously, if you are making calls to third libraries like BLAS, then let's say, uh, I think in our uh, exercise, like 40% of those 36 seconds was BLAS. So then depending on, you know, what kind of hardware you have underneath, you know, the, the performance might, might differ. So uh, if there is a bit of more of the L2 cache, then, you know, your BLAS might be a bit faster than on your local mission, and, and, and that's why we checked that out. But it's just, I would say, noise. The, the hardware configurations there were very much similar if not identical, I don't re exactly remember. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, pleasure. Does anyone have another question? Okay. Um, thank you. Thank you.